Hey, what's going on, everybody? If this is your first time tuning in to Tim's Tidbit, i like to say welcome. If it's not your first time tuning in to Tim's Tidbit, I still want to say welcome and give you a nice hearty well, thank you for always tuning in to Tim's Tidbit. And you are now watching Mama, I Want to Trade. Hey, Thank you, thank you, thank you again for tuning in to Tim's Tidbit. And like I said, you're now watching Mama, I Want to Trade. We have come to the final episode of the ICT Concepts Explained playlist. Well, Tim, wait a minute. The final episode? You didn't give me no strategy for the PDA rated I'm using. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Remember back in one of the other episodes when I told you that you already have everything that you need or oh, on one of the live shit i say i said you already had everything that you need to build your own strategy because you pretty much did the only thing this last playlist was intended to do was just give you my take on how i build a strategy my take on how i read the price section how i read the tape and how i wait for my entry model now that you have everything it's up to you to determine which PD array is going to be the triggering factor for your entry model and then just execute. Now, speaking of PD arrays, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to give you the breakdown of how to use the ICT PD array matrix chart. I call it the PIM dash chart because it's the order of operations. So how do you get this chart? Well, you go to the description in the video you're watching now or any video that's a part of the ICT Concepts Explained series. For example, video number 17, Strategies Overview. Speaking of um, videos, <laughs> why don't you feel free to um, support the channel by joining the channel for a very low, low price of, you know, either $2.99 a month, $4.99 a month, or $7.99 a month, please feel free to support the channel by joining a membership or it's cold outside. Buy yourself a Spotty Gang sweatshirt. Why don't you? Now, back to what we was talking about. If you go to the description, you'll see a link that says download slides. If you click on that download slides, it takes you to a Google Drive folder to download all of the slides for the entire ICT Concepts Explained series. And it has a DR, IDR tracker in there. And it has a weekly goal calculator that I created. And shout out the homie Robinson for making it far more functional all of this for you to download, right? And this is the ICT PIM dash chart or the PDA matrix. It's entitled ICT top down analysis. So once you download the PIM dash chart, right? The way you use the PIM dash chart, if you remember from the Dillon range video, the top line up here, that's the top of your Dillon range, the box top, the bottom line down here, that's the bottom of your dealing range, the box bottom. And then this line right here that says equilibrium, that's your equilibrium line. Now, this also applies to the quadrants. Remember, equilibrium, this premium of premium, discount of the premium, or premium of discount, discount of the discount, or premium and discount, the overall range. It all deals with fair value, box top, box bottom, box bottom, equilibrium right and the way you use it if you are bullish if you want to buy right you wait until price moves from a premium to a discount and when it hits your pedia ray that's a part of your strategy then you buy if you are a fair value gap trader and you want to be bullish and you want to buy, should I say, when the price moves into a discount market and it touches your fair value gap that's in line with your entry model setup, you buy on the fair value gap. If you want to be a seller, you wait for price to move into a premium market it goes to your entry model if you're a fair value gap trader 
in a premium market when it hits your fair value gap that you've already did your top down analysis on from your weekly to your daily to your four hour to your hourly to your 15, whatever time frame you enter your trades on when it gets to your fair value gap that's coincides with your entry model that coincides with your trading strategy, you will sell off of that fair value gap if you're bearish. And it's the same for every other PD array. No matter what PD array that you trade in your model, in your setup, you use the PIM dash chart the same. And the way the PIM dash chart works is, as price moves from equilibrium higher, it looks for the PD arrays in this order. It seeks out a mitigation block first. It seeks out a breaker second. It seeks out a, a, a bearish breaker second, a liquidity void third, a fair value gap fourth, a bearish order block fifth, a rejection block sixth, and then a prior high. That's the algorithm seeks it out in this order. This is what I learned from ICT. At equilibrium, as price drops, just in reverse, it seeks out mitigation block, bullish breakers, fair, liquidity voids, fair value gaps, bullish order blocks. It seeks it in this order because the prior high and the prior low is the farthest away from equilibrium. So that's why it seeks that out last. It's the farthest away from me. So that's how you use the PIM dash chart, right? And let's go into some of the old, one of the older, um, slides and we'll show how it works with all of the other um pd arrays and you don't need a specific video for each pd array all you need is all the videos you have right now come up with your strategy come up with your entry model come up with your set of rules and then just plug and play the different pd arrays all right let's look at uh let's look at breakers Okay, so looking at the breakers again, right? Looking at the price, price starts to drop from a premium. So you're moving from a premium market, right? So we're bearish in this instance. Don't worry about the time frame, which is looking at the setup, right? It starts to move from a premium market, right? If you notice, price um, starts to consolidate here. We, we came up, consolidated, left away from this area here with some authority, consolidated, filled in the um, um, imbalance, and then sold off with heavy distribution, right? Sold off with heavy distribution, coming down, making a breaker here because uh, this low broke this high, and then we traded through it. So now you have a breaker there, right? You got your breaker. Now, price, read in the price section, we got a balanced price range. All of this is a balanced price range from this candle's low up into this candle's high. This is your balanced price range from this low to this high. We left it with aggression, right? There's a breaker in that area. We came down after we left that balanced price range. We went down, took care of a whole lot of business. We took care of a whole lot of business, all right? And then we come back up to that balance price range and trade it into that breaker price rejected so right there look what it also traded back to in this same area right there there's a fair value gap right here inside what is this this is a void you have a liquidity void now mind you I personally always consider liquidity voids to be a complete gap like we see right here. But in one of the prior ICT videos, when we have consecutive candles move, I used to always call this a sell side imbalance. ICT calls it a sell side imbalance. But in his liquidity void video, he talks about these multiple down close or up close candles being liquidity void. So that's what I'll take it as because that's how he pointed it out. But I still... And I'll often hear him say the full, the liquidity voids are a true liquidity void is a full gap. But back to what I was saying, you have a breaker here. You have a fair value gap here. You have a liquidity void there. We have so many, we have three different PD arrays 
that you could have taken the same sale off of right there with the exact same setup. The exact same setup. Three different PD arrays. You have a liquidity void that's coming back up to this breaking market structure area and then selling off. You could have taken it at any point of the liquidity void depending on your risk tolerance because your, your stop loss would have been above this high up here above where the four is on this entire liquidity void. Yes, it's a big stop loss, but... It's all about your risk tolerance. With this breaker, your stop loss is still above this high right here with the breaker. With the fair value gap right there, any part of the fair value gap, your stop loss is still at the top of this swing high here. If you went at the top of the fair value gap, you wouldn't have got picking up. But anywhere from the touch of the fair value gap to 50%, like I like to do, you would have been picking up. So again, as you see, you just will plug and play your PD array into your entry model. It doesn't matter which PD array you trade. It's all about initially you would determine which PD array you're drawn to, which one you um, can see easiest. Can you see fair value gaps? Can you see liquidity voids? Can you see breakers? Can you see mitigation blocks? Which one catches your eye? Which is most readily notable, if you will, to you? Once you determine that, then you just plug that into your strategy, your trading strategy, and develop it into an entry model. Once you develop it into your entry model, will you require the price action to take out liquidity before looking for your entry setup? Will you require, will you make your entry model prior to taking out liquidity on your way to taking out liquidity? You just determine what's your what's your trigger, what's your requirements. You spell all of this out by going through back testing, understanding what fits you as a trader, and then executing. Hopefully I didn't confuse you with any of this. Hopefully it was up to your expectations. And sorry, no, I don't have a magic wand. I don't have the perfect setup for every PD array. Every trader will be different. It's up to you to devise your own trading strategy, your own entry model, and determine which PD array fits your trait and personality. Hopefully this series helped, man. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you, man. Gone.